I want to share two quick revelations I had, and it was simply from spending time in the Lord's presence in worship. Number one, worship is powerful. In another video I shared that in Isaiah 61.3 it says, the garment of praise defeats the spirit of heaviness. And then in uh, Psalm 100 verse 1 and 4 it says, shout unto God with a joyful shout, serve him with gladness, and enter his presence with joyful singing. And then in verse 4 it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Then Acts 17.25 says that uh, Paul and Silas were in prison, but they worshipped and prayed, and that's what brought the, the Holy Ghost through like an earthquake, and broke open the prison doors and every prison chain, and the whole prison was set free, and obviously, of course, including uh, Paul and Silas. So Scripture gives us such a powerful, uh, uh, shows us such a powerful thing of worship, of how powerful worship is. Then you have the woman with the issue of blood. All she did was touch the hem of Jesus' garment. All she needed was one touch of him, not even an embrace, just a touch of his garment, and she was made free from 18 years of bondage. And I was just worshiping. And, you know, I just felt the power and the presence of God overflow my life. I could feel things break off. And I'm already a free man. John 8, 36 says, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I've already been made free, but I can tell you that I experienced more of the love of the Father. I experienced more of His goodness, just simply from spending time in worship, in both praise and worship. What's the difference? Praise is full body expression, shouting, yelling, screaming, giving joyful shouts to the Lord. Worship is sitting at His feet, giving Him adoration, ministering to the Lord. And both are powerful. But like I said, the Bible gives us many, many uh, things in the Word that show how powerful that it is. And there's another story in uh, 2 Samuel. It's somewhere between, uh, in chapter 6, but somewhere between verse 16 to 23, how, uh, you know, David just worships the Lord. And, uh, you know, people make fun of him, but he, he dances his heart out. And, you know, in, in Psalm 47, uh, 42, 1, it says that, uh, as a deer panteth for water, so my soul panteth for you. So there's something powerful simply about worshiping the Lord. Simply about worshiping the Lord. So that's revelation number one. Worship God, give me your all. And I can tell you, walls will break down. Chains will fall off. He will heal your heart. He will mend, he will mend your life. He will restore relationships. He will restore your finances. He will restore your health, your emotions, your mind, your brain. Maybe you've had torment in your mind. Simply worshiping God sets you free from those bondages. Hallelujah. The second revelation that I had was on that life is actually easy. Now. Am I saying that bad times will never come, that bad things will never happen, that the devil will never attack you? Of course not. But the Bible says in Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So obviously, there is something in life where people can try to do bad things to you, the devil can try to do bad things to you, but you have authority over those things. Luke 9, 1 says, you have power and authority over every demon and to cure all diseases. Luke 10, 19 says, that you have power and authority over the devil and that nothing shall hurt you by any means. Mark 16, 15 to 18 says that he who believes in me, this is Jesus speaking, so he who believes in me, Jesus, these signs shall follow. They shall cast out devils. They shall heal the sick. They shall speak in new tongues. When they drink poison, or if they drink poison, if they handle serpents and scorpions, they will not be harmed. So we have authority over the hard situations in life. Just because a hard situation comes doesn't mean you have to be defeated. Don't uh, don't mix and don't confuse a hard situation and a battle for defeat. You have the victory through your Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, and 2 Corinthians 2, 14 says, He always leads you in triumph through Christ. Now, I want to go back to the part where I said that life is easy. Some people disagree with me, and that's okay. But I want to tell you that the Bible actually says, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So if you disagree with me, that's fine. But I want to tell you that you can actually have an easy life. A yoke with Jesus, that means when you're connected to him, when you're one with him, when you're yoked to him, life is actually easy. Hard times may come, but you can go through that easily. Romans 8.37 says you're more than a conqueror through him who loves you. So just because a hard situation comes, doesn't mean you have to be in defeat. Doesn't mean that life actually has to be hard. I was doing a partial fast yesterday, and you know, in the evening, I had this thought that like, oh, like this is really hard, this and that. I thought, you know what? It doesn't have to be hard. 
The Bible says his yoke is easy and his burden is light in Matthew 11.30. So I, as soon as I got the truth of that word inside my brain, as soon as I got the truth of the word that I'm more than a conqueror, that I'm strong according to Joel 3.10, that I will not sorrow for his joy is my strength according to Nehemiah 8.10, Micah 3.8, truly I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. And the Bible also says, not by might, not by power, but by his Spirit. So it's the Holy Ghost that gives us power. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us strength. And even if you're over, you know, if, you're, uh, if you have temptation to sin. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God is faithful. He does not allow you to be tempted beyond, beyond what you're able, and He always provides a way of escape. You have strength from the Holy Ghost to overcome every situation, to overcome every temptation, and to overcome every situation in life. You are more than a conqueror. Life doesn't have to be hard. I want to tell you this simple revelation. Life does not have to be hard. Just because there's hard situations, just because you face mountains, doesn't mean you can't overcome them. You can overcome them. The Bible says to speak to the mountain, command it to be tossed in the sea, and it will be done for you. Mark 9, 23. All things are possible to him who believes. You can live a life of rest. You can live a life of joy. Psalm 144, 15. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. That's your joy right there. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you one more scripture to... to to give you this rest, this easy yoke, this light burden. Matthew 11, 20 to 30 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, for I will give you rest. So if there is a heavy yoke, if there is a heavy burden, come to Jesus. He gives you rest. Then verse 9, 29 says, Learn from me, for, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Take my yoke upon you, for I am gentle at heart. I am humble at heart, you will find rest for your souls. Then verse 30 says, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus gives you a light burden and an easy yoke to bear. He gives you rest, rest for your body, rest for your soul, rest for your mind, and rest in life. And He gives you joy and abundance. Hallelujah. God bless, God bless you. Like, comment, and subscribe.